Welcome, friends, to Socket Obscura. Follow me and see sockets and other fastener drive systems that are unusual, obscure, and even obsolete. Hey, guys. Thought today we'd delve into the 32nd of an inch size sockets. Now, this content may shock some of our international viewers, but here in America, we still have to deal with fractional inch size bolts. Usually, they go in the 16th of an inch increments, but every once in a while, you'll come across a wrench marked 25 30 seconds. Why make them in those weird in-between sizes? Well, it turns out there's an interesting story behind all of this. But to tell it, we'll need to go back to the 1800s. At that time, there was no standardized set of sizes for bolts. One manufacturer would make them one way, and another would make theirs a different way. This meant that if you bought a bolt from one manufacturer and a nut from a different one, even though they looked like they were the same diameter, they might not fit together. And forget about head sizes. they just make them to fit whatever size wrench they felt like. So a nationwide unified standard was needed. And in 1864, a man named William Sellers set out to do just this, proposing in front of the Franklin Institute a standard somewhat based on the Whitworth standard which was taking off in England, except Seller's standard would use a 60-degree thread pitch, and the points of the threads would be squared off, as opposed to being rounded on the Whitworth. Initially called the Franklin standard or the Seller's standard, this standard would be adopted by some manufacturers, but it wasn't until the U.S. Navy adopted it in 1884 that it really took off. The shipyards in Brooklyn and Portsmouth were using one type of bolt, and the yards in Boston and Philadelphia were using another. This caused a problem when a ship from Brooklyn would go to Boston for repairs, and they'd find out the parts were not interchangeable. After the U.S. Navy adoption, the standard became known as the United States Standard, or USS. And this is the standard from where those weird 30-second sizes come. A 5 16th bolt would get a 19 30 second wrench size, 7 16th would get 25 30 seconds, and a 9 16th bolt got 31 30 seconds. The USS standard uses a mathematical formula to calculate the wrench size for the bolt, the head size being 1 and a half the diameter of the bolt plus an eighth of an inch. This has the effect of any bolt with a diameter ending in a sixteenth of an inch getting a head size ending in a thirty-second of an inch. The standard applied to the size of wrenches, but was not a naming convention. So some wrench manufacturers adopted the Whitworth naming convention for wrench sizes, where the wrench size would be marked based on the diameter of the bolt and not on the jaw size of the wrench. So since the USS standard said a 19 30 seconds wrench should fit a 5 16 bolt, some manufacturers would mark the wrench with 5 16 even though it measured 19 30 seconds at the opening. The USS standard also only accounted for coarse thread bolts, and going into the next century, automotive manufacturers wanted fine thread bolts. The Society of Automotive Engineers, or SAE, was founded in 1904, and in 1906, the SAE adopted the ALM, Association of Licensed Automobile Manufacturers, standard for fine thread bolts. The SAE standard was similar to the USS standard, just with a finer thread pitch. However, for the wrench size, they rounded up to 16th inch increments. But now there were two slightly different standards for bolt and wrench sizes out there, and to complicate things further, some wrench manufacturers continued to use a Whitworth naming convention. Like this wrench that's marked half-inch cap for pipe cap plugs and half-inch SAE. 
This wrench is way bigger than a modern half-inch wrench, but if we test it against a half-inch diameter bolt, which has a three-quarters inch head under SAE, it fits fine. So this is a three-quarter inch wrench, not a half-inch. Or how about this wrench marked 7 16th SAE that's not even SAE. It's way bigger than 7 16ths. And when we test it out against a 7 16ths diameter bolt, which should have a 5 8 head under SAE, it's all loosey-goosey. So this is actually a 25 30 seconds wrench using the USS standard, but it's marked SAE. All this confusion didn't start to clear up until 1935, when the USS standard would be merged into the SAE standard, becoming the ASA, or American standard, which included ASA Fine and ASA Coarse. But it still wasn't until 1948 that the standard would be truly unified, when the US, Canada, and Great Britain came together to make an agreement to adopt the American standard as the Unified Thread Standard, which covered UNC, Unified Course, and UNF, Unified Fine. These are the standards that are still in use for fractional inch measurement bolts today. So all this should have done away with those goofy slash 30 second sizes. Well, not completely. They kept them for smaller machine screw sizes, which is why the smaller quarter-inch drive socket sets always include 30 second sizes, and 11 30 seconds is still an extremely common size in electrical boxes, as it's used on number 8 screws. Otherwise, for the larger sizes, if you only work on modern equipment, you'll rarely encounter a 30 second size bolt. They do turn up quite often on vintage equipment, like on this old grinder that required a 21 30 second socket to remove the wheel nut. And there were also pretty common sizes on tappet wrenches. For situations where you'd have two nuts on the same bolt, and they wanted one of them to be a larger size. Eh, unless you're like me and your OCD demands you to have every single possible size of socket and wrench, you probably don't need to worry about the 30 second sizes. They're certainly not included in any modern socket sets. Your best bet for fleshing out a full set is to dig through the bins of the flea market. A lot of times you can find vintage sockets for a quarter or 50 cents a piece that way. Otherwise I found Genius Tools still makes 30 second of an inch size sockets. They even have deep socket versions too. Thanks everyone for watching. We'll go back to another tool company history for the next episode. So be sure you're subscribed for that. See you later. Bye.